Bakuru Banzai. Born to an American mother and a Japanese father. Thus began life as he was destined to live it. Going in several directions at once. A brilliant neurosurgeon, he roamed the planet studying martial arts and particle physics. Collecting, I forgot about that. Collect, collecting around him the most eccentric group of friends. Those hard-rocking scientists, the Hong Kong Cavaliers. And now, with his astonishing jet car ready for a bold assault on the dimension barrier, Bakuru Banzai faces the greatest challenge of his turbulent life. While high above Earth, an alien spacecraft keeps a nervous watch on Team Banzai's every move. <laughs> Welcome to Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, adventure into the Eighth Dimension. Uh, this is a podcast where we review that movie that I just mentioned. It's oldie but a goodie. I'm joined by Sandro. Hello. And our epic singing voice over here, Mr. Ben. Hello. Ben Volchok. Hello. Benjamin. How you doing? Good. Excited to uh, discuss a film that I saw many, many, many years ago and then revisited the other night in preparation for this podcast. Ooh. That's glad to hear. That's more prep than I usually do. (laughs) Um, Is it? uh, No, I just usually, like, guess at what the movie's about. Yeah. Write down what I think. Like, I read the blurb on the back. And then just sort of make it up as I go along. Mm. It's it, it usually works out. I usually get most of the plot right. We, f- we, we fix it in post. We fix it in post. Mm. Yeah, you just edit out all the bits where I just mention things that aren't in the movie. <laughs> yeah. We record for ages. Yeah, it takes so long. <laughs> but this week, I actually watched the movie. Wow. Uh, 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 what are you guys' thoughts on this movie? I love it. Unabashedly, unashamedly. Mm. I think it's extraordinary... It was one of the first films that I remember seeing that was like like a cult film, but in a way that didn't, it wasn't sort of, oh, look at this weird, freaky, gross film. It was a, almost a secret in a way, because no one had mm. heard of it when I remember watching it. And then it's just so joyous, and it's so lovely spirited and off the rails at the same time and so imaginative and lovingly put together even if even if a lot of it doesn't make a lick of sense um (laughs) yeah but but in a good way you know it's it's Mm. deliberate oddballness um Mm. and i Mm. but at the same time it's so immaculate so yeah i i love it a lot Mm. that's good that's good sandro what are your thoughts on this movie I feel like this was made for us and our show at this (laughs) point in time. It feels like everything we've been reviewing has been leading up to this, which is just (laughs) taking all of these genres and just mashing them together. Like, it's that perfect blend of, like, Dreamscape meets Ice Pirates meets Toxic Avenger, except it's not as gross. Mm. Like, it's just, it's everything. And it is glorious. Doesn't make sense. Is it funny? I'm not sure, but it's good. Absolutely. I think it's funny. It's very deliberately funny. Yes, yes. But in a very dry sense. There are jokes, but there aren't jokes necessarily. Apart from the the, the, the fact that one of the main characters is called, or one of the supporting characters is called John Big Booty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, is, that is continuously corrected to being John Big Booty. Big Booty, not bootay. Booty. Yes. <laughs> and the mm. fact that the... I mean, we'll get into this later on, but the fact that aliens Mm. who came to Earth through an alternate dimension decided that the best (laughs) way to fit in was calling all of themselves John, followed by a random noun or random word, thus giving us the glorious names of John Smallberries. (laughs) <laughs> and John many jars mm. <laughs> excellent and you say there are no jokes well I feel like the jokes <laughs> blend in seamlessly with the weirdness of the movie yeah like yeah. they they go into one another it's like one continuous joke 
Yeah, the jokes yeah. aren't necessarily like uh, there's no setup, there's no punchline, and it's just they say something weird, and yeah. that's now a part of the world. And it's great. Yeah, you're right. You're I mean, right. sorry, it's not great. It's garbage because that's what I think this movie is. Oh no, it's, what? It's terrible garbage, trash. Boy, boy, do I hate hate fun, and I hate life. Oh. Uh, and especially I hate this movie because um, I'm a hater ouch. and I hate things. I've got uh, I've got evidence to point in the other direction because you sent mm-hmm. me a message at oh, sh- oh no, I've been found out. 12.20pm <laughs> today saying, Uh-oh. don't you love it when you're 20 minutes into a movie and you already know it's going to be a goodie? So, <laughs> I think you're lying. I've been found out. I've been caught. I think you're lying. Okay, I really like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was super fun. Uh, there was a surprising, like, the backup actors were, uh, like, the most famous actors <laughs> in yes. my book. Yes. They had, like, good old uh, Doc Brown yep. as one of the aliens. He is John Big Boutte. Yeah. Yeah, Big Boutte, which is brilliant. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum. He's yep. just, he's there. He's in a cowboy outfit. I, what is happening? <laughs> um... It was brilliant, and I agree. I think all these movies that we've reviewed up to this point have have come to a fruition here. Yeah, and it's yeah. good to have Ben mm. as a uh, longtime podcaster and a guest of the show <laughs> here yes. to review it with us. Yes, well, it's my absolute pleasure. I remember when when Sandro when Sandro pointed out the uh, list of films that they were considering. Well, that you were considering. Uh, reviewing and this name jumped out and I was like, me please. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, you did. Very glad to, very glad to be on. Uh, speaking of guests on podcasts though, very up top, we got to do some plugs. Woo-hoo. As I mentioned last week, I appeared on the Crooked Table podcast reviewing the two Machete movies by Robert Rodriguez, the Spy Kids spinoffs that should not be watched by kids at all. They're not good for kids. Uh, that's available now. Link in the description. Also, Zach, you appeared on Nerd Out Consumed, uh, which we've we recorded. It's not out yet, but you reviewed Star Trek 4, 5, and 6 with us, following on from yeah. from when Reese joined us on this show to do Star Trek 3. So that is on Nerd Out on Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, Star Trek. It's Star and Trekkie. That's, that's my official review. If you yeah. want more, you're going to have to go... Listen to that podcast. Let's get into the movie. There were so many other options yeah. this week, Zach. I'll quickly go through them. And all of them are wrong. There was Tightrope, uh, Clint Eastwood, Thriller. He's a detective trying to like hunt down a killer. It looks okay. Uh, there was also The Woman in Red, which was uh, Gene Wilder's movie. He wrote, directed, mm. starred in it. He sees a woman who's dressed in red and then tries various schemes to try and meet her, which sounds hilarious. It uh, sounds mm. like the plot of The Matrix, really. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, and, th- and then there was also Sheena, which is about the female version of Tarzan. And I watched it. Mm. I said I was going to, and I did. So tell us about this this movie that you watched. So she's with her white parents, and her white parents die, and this tribe are like, you can come live with us, and they raise her to be in the jungle, and she's got a telepathic link with the animals, and the way that she gets that telepathic link is she puts her hand to her head in the same way an elephant would put its trunk to its head, because that's something she saw when she was a kid, and doesn't make any sense. What? Um, <laughs> okay. And then and then there's, like, the prince of Africa murders the king to get the, the, the thing, and then they see that Sheena saw it, and then they chase her, and then there's just a lot of chasing and a lot of fighting, and it's awful, but also hilarious. Hmm. It's very funny. Any any highlights from that movie? Yeah, uh, there's this scene where um, the bad guys are trying to escape in a helicopter, mm-hmm. and Sheena rocks up riding an elephant, being like, stop them, elephant. And so the elephant uh, grabs the currently in motion helicopter blades with its trunk and just bends them like twigs. <laughs> that's how helicopters work. <laughs> that was very funny. Yeah, no, that sounds great. And then there's just like a lot of nudity after that. Just constant. So what would you rate it? Oh, it's an oldie. <laughs> oh, okay. It sucked. Right. It was really bad. Excellent. Good to know. Um, but funny, but also don't watch it. No one watch it. D- there you go. Ben? I have not seen 
uh, any of the films mentioned. Ah, uh, I was just going to say, don't watch it. So that's, okay. that's good. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's good news. And keep it that way, Ben. <laughs> keep it in the unviewed. I do think. I think I've got. I think I. The Gene Wilder one, I think, is on my list. Oh yeah, perhaps. It's not super well received that one. Ah, uh, I don't know. It's Gene Wilder, so it could be good. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, getting yeah. into the creatives. This movie is directed by W. D. Richeter. It's, it's it's one of two movies he's directed. The other movie he directed is called Late for Dinner in the nineties. It's a sci-fi. It looks okay. Have you seen it, Ben? Late for Dinner. Yes. No, I I don't think I have. Um, but uh, W. D. Richter was also a screenwriter. I think he was more famous for being a screenwriter. He wrote, uh, well, he co-wrote Big Trouble in Little China, and also co-wrote the Philip Kaufman remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yes, which is how he mm. met Jeff Goldblum as well, which yeah. is why Jeff Goldblum's in that because he's in that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense mm. that he would write Big Trouble in Little China after directing this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes for sure. a lot of sense. Mm. It's it's very very similar, I guess. Feel the feeling of it is is quite he's, similar. He's a big old weeb. <laughs> That's what I wrote down. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. I I I put down that Buckaroo Banzai was a weeb. Yeah. And that the director was also a weeb. <laughs> I mean, Buckaroo Banzai it said was half Japanese, so I don't know if that mm. mean if that. Yeah, but have you seen you the actual use... ca- actor they got to play a half Japanese man? Yeah, true. I don't know. True. He could be half Japanese. Look, I don't know. But he looks like a very white man to me. Peter Weller, very much mm. a white man. Very much. Although, uh, mm. in another film, played a uh, half, half white man, half robot. So Yeah, he's Robocop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Peter Weller, who <laughs> plays Buckaroo, is also Robocop. So. That's right. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's interesting. If, if the, the robotic parts were made in Japan... <laughs> Most recently, he hasn't really acted much. He's just, like, directed a lot of TV. So he's still around, but he's more directing things. Yeah. I think I think there's, there was talks that he was going to return for, like, a Robocop sequel. I don't know, but we'll see. Huh. Um, but mm. it would be good to see him on screen again. Some other actors that were considered for the role of Buckaroo Bonsai, though, include our good friend Tom Hanks and also Michael Keaton. <laughs> and I think both of them would have been pretty good. Mm. Uh, yep. Trying to imagine Tom Hanks is a struggle. <laughs> I can imagine it, and that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like both Tom Hanks and Michael Keaton would would be they're too, especially Michael Keaton, would be too zany. Yeah. Mm. Like the the reason that this film works is that so much of it is so deadpan and so earnest, at least in the lead role. Like obviously, you know, John Lithgow and. A lot of the aliens are so ballistic, but um, yeah, the, for for the actual, you know, for the humans, there's something really earnest about Peter Weller's portrayal of the character, and that I think yeah. would have been lost if someone like Michael Keaton. He's so serious, ninety. Per- I don't remember seeing his character smile, <laughs> except in the end credits. Yeah, he's just super serious. I'm this action hero, dude. That's also a, a neurosurgeon and a kung fu fighter and <laughs> particle professor or whatever, you know? Yeah. One of my favorite things about his performance as well is that he acts like an action hero, but whenever he's in action sequences, it's so awkward. <laughs> like, he's not very good at it. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned John Lithgow before. He is in mm. this. He plays Dr. Emilio Lizardo. And also Space Hitler, basically. That's his character. <laughs> um, we've seen him before this year. He was in Footloose. Other things he's been in, like Interstellar, and he's also Lord Farquaad. He's been in everything, pretty much. I'd like to point out that we didn't make that comparison. The movie made that comparison to Hitler. That's The aliens say, oh, he's your equivalent of Hitler. <laughs> We'll speak through the rest of the cast. Jeff Goldblum is Dr. Sidney. This is, like, early on for him, but not super early on. Like, he was still doing supporting roles, but, you know, he was well-known. And he's great mm. in this, obviously. He's a cowboy. A rootin' tootin'. Texas shootin'. He basically plays himself, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting that this he's just, like, a bit awkward. And mm. he's there. Yeah. But, and then, then he shoots some guys. It's all right. Yeah. And also, you say Texas, but his nickname in the film was New Jersey. Look, they're all the same. All the states are the same. 
<laughs> I loved how he flubs so many lines and then just like does them over again and they leave it in the movie. That's something that happens a lot. Is like they mess up lines and leave it in, and I love that. Hmm. It's great. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd is John Big Bootay. Of course, he's Doc Brown. Hmm. We saw him in Star Trek Three as the Klingon dude. We've also got Robert Ito as Professor Hikata, who is the voice of the Mandarin in the '90s Iron Man show, as well as being in a bunch of other movies. Ronald Lacey plays the president. He's the evil major Arnold Nazi guy whose face gets melted off in Raiders of the Lost Ark. So it's cool to see him again. <laughs> yeah, he survived that? Oh my god. Yeah. And finally, Clancy Brown plays Rawhide, second ever time on screen. We saw him last year in Shawshank Redemption. He was Captain Byron, so it was cool to see him pop up. Yeah, that was a lot of familiar faces. I'd also want to give a shout out to Vincent, Vincent Scavelli, uh, who plays one of the aliens who you might recognize from any film where that he's been been in because he has a very long sad face oh him yeah 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 yeah. he was one of the other alien that Mm. because there were like two two main aliens helping uh the bad guy and there's big bootay who is who is unfortunately this is a spoiler by the way so if you haven't seen the movie and want to now big bootay dies and it's the saddest (laughs) death (laughs) <laughs> of the whole movie i was distraught i was like no not mr big bootay no <laughs> for the reception 69 percent on rotten tomatoes audience score of 69 percent one two three nice nice <laughs> nice nice, nice. A, lo- a lot of the reviews nice. at the time were like this is weird and complicated, but I like it, so that's yep. cool. Um, it has kind of gotten a cult following recently, though, uh, when it got its DVD release in the early 2000s, and mm. and since then, people have kind of said that it was a little bit ahead of its time, which I, I think I'd, ag- I'd agree with. Uh, in, in, in what way? Like, it's parodying question. things that you wouldn't parody in the 80s. Right, yes, I see. I don't know. That is interesting. I don't know if it's ahead of its time, but it feels more modern than a lot of movies we've done. Yeah. It's still a bad, like, B-movie, like, having fun, awesome sort of thing. Like, it doesn't feel corporate. It's not bad, it just doesn't feel like Hollywood-esque sort of movie. It feels like they did what they wanted to do, Mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. Even though it was riffing on so many of these... Uh, tropes and themes and mm. ideas that were floating around in films of the time. Yeah, it's just taken it and synthesized it into its own work. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Although, I, I do have to say, I was really hoping the female role would have, you know, a role. A <laughs> role? In this oh, yeah. Movie. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> she is definitely there. Uh, and she's uh, definitely damseling and in distress. And in distress. I, I love yep. how she dies, but they never are like, she dead. She just dies. And you're like, hang on, is she dead? And then she comes back to life and you're like, oh, so she was dead. <laughs> so this cost $17 million, which kind of amazed me. That's quite expensive, actually. Uh, what do you think it made, though? I uh, accidentally just saw the number, so I'm going to abstain. Oh, right, Zach. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cheating already, Ben. <laughs> we haven't even got to my section. Uh, for, uh, 30? No, nah, this, this this did not do well. Oh, no. Uh, five. Oh, a little higher. Just a tad higher, but you're pretty much there. It's at six? Yeah, yeah, six million. Oof. That is a... Big loss. Wow. Yeah. I'm surprised this bomb's so hard. Honestly, I mean, it's not really a surprise. I mean, it's a film that's film that was trying to do something different. So, yeah. And at the time, everyone was conditioned to kind of just want very much one thing, I think. I don't know. Mm. Maybe I'm wrong. It wasn't Star Wars-y enough. Yeah, gotcha. probably. <laughs> it was too goofy. It was too... Zany not taking itself seriously while taking itself very seriously. Yeah, uh, and I guess it is it is ahead of its time in the fact that it is, like, straight and zany at the same time, which wasn't really mm. explored so much. I mean, we had, we had Repo Man earlier in the year, and I feel like these two films True. are quite similar in that way. Yes. And they both mm. didn't do very well, except Repo Man costs, like, one million and this costs 17. But they are quite similar in that sense, and I feel like they both do age 
quite well and work better now than mm. they probably would have when they came out. They've held up tremendously well, and at least their you know their their critical audience reception has more or less maintained like their reputation has has yeah. maintained mm. over all of these years which is uh, uh, a lot better than some of the other movies oh boy uh we've seen this year <laughs> all right let's just jump right into let's just jump into it it's pretty obvious but the opening credits the song is just a star wars <laughs> song with a couple notes changed <laughs> yeah just trumpety uh the font oh yes now did you guys pay attention to the very start where it throws some fonts at you is this where it has the logo, which we never see mm. again, the double oh, yeah. B in a circle logo? Yep. That's right. The, the ABBA logo. <laughs> Do we not yes. see it? Like, is it not... Is it Was it really not even, like... I think it's on like... some of their uniforms. Yeah. Maybe. It's like a say. badge or something, yeah. No, I, I remember it's on the, the like, Kid Scout and mm. his dad. Oh, or yeah. Whatever they are. Because they're, like, part of the fan club. That's right. So the fan club has the BB symbol on it. Mm. But they don't actually wear anything, I don't think, that has it on it. There we go. Um, but yes, the first font that they throw at us is a big, chunky font. <laughs> the white with, like, the the chopped up letters that are all big and chunky. I was like, ooh, those are some thick letters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> yep. some chunky boys. <laughs> um, I, I, love that, I love that we're about, like... Like forty-five minutes in, and we haven't gotten past the opening font. <laughs> no, no, we really need to get into it. Well, we only started like uh, fifteen minutes ago, or whatever. Yeah, I know. I know. yeah. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack in this movie. I feel huge film, amazing ideas, but that kerning. All right, we get the opening monologue thing that Zach said, the opening crawl, which was the intro to the movie. You said it word for word. It's just the Star Wars font. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's just, it's just yellow. So the intro is he's got a jet car, and yeah, he's trying to break through the dimensional barrier, uh, except he's, he's late. He's late to this test because he's busy doing brain surgery. <laughs> it's, the only t- it's the only time we see that. He's like a medical professional. Yeah. And... And it's just at the start, and he's doing surgery with um, Goldblum, and just talking with him and being like, "Oh, you got to be careful here. Don't go, don't go tugging on anything. You don't know <laughs> what it could be attached to." They do that thing as well, which um, you know, not necessarily made famous by, but it is a big part of the intro of Indiana Jones, where they try to hide his face as much as possible. Oh yeah. The first time you see him is when he's getting into the jet car a couple minutes later well because even then he's wearing a balaclava yeah 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 so you can just see his eyes i was thinking that why did they do that mystery <laughs> uh, you're right a sense of suspense who is this mysterious brilliant man that we saw on the poster while walking into the theater yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's right yeah. I was just thinking of which actor is this? I can't I can't see his face. Why why are they keeping his face hidden up? I don't understand. <laughs> I'm gonna see it in like twenty minutes anyway. Why why hide it up? I don't I don't get you cinema. Yeah. Not everyone will have seen the poster, I guess. I don't know. The design for his jet car is great. It's like a Mandalorian meets a Batmobile. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's it's a very it's good they design. Just... They just got an F-10 and stuck some Mandalorian rockets yeah. on it. Oh, wait, I meant DeLorean, not Mandalorian. You know what I mean. <laughs> the, the, the back to the, the, the future. Th- yep. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. We, we all know where we, we were coming from there. Yeah, we all know what's going on. Uh, yeah, he's driving it and he's going super fast, but then he veers off course. <gasps> oh, yeah. And he's heading towards some mountains. <sighs> there's, there's a lot of jargon. I just have to say, there's so much jargon thrown at you at the start for some reason. A lot of that jargon is actual, like, uh, recordings taken from, like, Mission Control. Wow. <laughs> oh, really? For, like, space flights and stuff, they just took that and they just put it in the scene, <laughs> which I love. That's really that's, cool. That's amazing. He just aims the car right at a mountain, and then he drives through it. Mm. Drives through the mountain. And we get a quote where... um. The people are, like, looking at the car, and the car tracks that just stop at this mountain, and they go, <laughs> Chase One, we've got his, his tracks. They go right up into a wall of rock. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, that's an appropriate reaction. Yeah. Presumably not 
taken from actual mission control flights to space. <laughs> yeah. Ah, you don't know that. There's a lot of rocks <laughs> <That's true>. out <laughs> there. Man, that's a bummer. Wow. But yeah, he gets into the eighth dimension. It's real creepy. It is. It's real spooky time. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's some of the aliens, but they're naked in this dimension, and they're flying around. I thought they were babies. Like, yeah, they're like fetus alien things. <laughs> yes, I thought they were like, it's got evil baby things, is what I wrote down. <laughs> uh, that scream at him. It looked almost ant man when Ant-Man oh, yeah. shrinks down. Very much like that sort of effect. Yeah, well, he's going to the cool. space between spaces, like, you know, mm-hmm. so... Which is the same thing as Ant-Man, It's the same thing as Ant-Man, yeah. What we're saying but... is, Ant-Man, where on are you? You stole... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he stole the pirate. <laughs> Would not be surprised. Ant-Man is actually Buck Rubens <laughs> this whole time. Paula Rudze. Mm. <laughs> Good. Yep, that's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Paula Roo. I love Paula Roo. Paula Roo Rudze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like a character. He comes out the other side of the mountain, sees that there's goo on his windshield, and also this alien brain mm. sort of thing stuck underneath his car as well. He is a dick to mission control. <laughs> I just have to say, he just doesn't talk to them for like their entire time. They're like, Do you copy over? We're detecting some vibrations on the windshield, which is just him touching it. (laughs) Please respond. Come on, man. This is my job to talk to you and make sure everything's okay. We're waiting for your response. There's probably like 20 people here, including your family members, that want to know if you're okay. Mm. Please respond. (laughs) I just wanted him to say everything was okay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that is a, yeah. I noticed that as well. But it, they were doing the whole mysterious bit. Yeah. At the moment, although I, yeah. I think he takes his mask off at this point. He does, but he still hasn't spoken. Yeah. No, he does. He speaks at the very start. Oh, that's though. right. He speaks at the very start when he's doing the operation. Uh, and then we cut to Emilio Lozado, who electrocutes himself to start a flashback. <laughs> So just to yeah, he's he's in a uh, he's in a mental asylum basically. Yes, mm. and his his room is crowded with all sorts of bits and bobs and notes and you know scientific writings and experiments and all sorts all sorts of things. And his hair is very much tall. <laughs> it, it is the spikies. Mad scientist kind. Oh yeah. I I feel like um and I could be wrong, but I feel like the villain character in The Incredibles, what was his name? Dynamo or something? Uh mm. Oh, what is his name? I don't remember. Was it Dynamo? I don't know. The 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 villain kid in yeah. In The Incredibles, I feel like they based his look off John Lithgow in this film. Yeah, 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 no. They look very similar. You're not wrong. <laughs> That at least the hair they've got yeah. spot on. That is very true. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like the shape of the face as well is quite similar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's very oh, yeah. like you know long and round like John Lithgow. Uh, we're talking about syndrome. Syndrome. That's syndrome. right. Syndrome. That was it. Yeah. Good old Cindy boy. Cindy. <laughs> Cindy Diesel. Um. <laughs> so he has a flashback that reveals that he actually created the concept of going into the eighth dimension alongside Professor Hikara. Lizardo he he performs the experiment way back when. Uh, he he aims the car right at the wall. He gets stuck in the wall and then gets possessed by the Hitler of Planet Ten. <laughs> mm. uh, did they banish him into the body of? Dr. Lazaro? Because apparently he's he's alien Hitler. Yes. And so their punishment was to banish him to Earth, the worst place ever. <laughs> Which it, it makes sense. That I'm I'm with that so far. But did they plan for a mad scientist character to try and enter the eighth dimension so that they could make force alien hitler to possess his body was that their plan for punishment i don't think that i don't think he was was he was he actually banished or or was he just possessed by him there is a i wrote down the the quote it's like later on um i'll try and find it yeah yeah uh they get a tape later on that says yeah there's an evil dictator on planet 10 who they trapped in the eighth dimension and then when lizardo broke into the eighth dimension that meant that he was able to get free oh that's what oh right. So they put 
the, him in the eighth dimension. Not that he originally came from the eighth no, dimension. No, there we go. Oh, okay. Uh, and then so they put him in the eighth dimension, and then the fact that um, Lizardo got through to the eighth dimension allowed him to escape into Lizardo. I think so. Ah, there we go. That makes that makes sense now. But Thank then you. What about the Orson Welles stuff? Because that happened in the thirties, and Lizardo definitely. Oh uh, yeah. Wasn't... Mm. Yeah, because no, the Lizardo, this happened in 1938. Yeah, but, okay. That's when the War of the Worlds broadcast was. Oh, it? yeah, that's true. They do date it perfectly. Hmm. But then why is he not... Because that's like 50 years in the past as of 84. Why has Lizardo not aged like crazy? <laughs> Maybe it's alien. Maybe. Maybe it's alien goop. Maybe. Alien goop, good for your health. Well, get all goopy, kids. Do you get that alien slime that pops up on your windshield and just slather that on? <laughs> That's it. Anti-aging cream. Yeah, anti-aging. Back in the present, Lizardo escapes the hospital. By lifting up dudes and snapping their necks. Strong oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that took a sudden strong turn. Why is he so strong? What? 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 Aliens! <laughs> Aliens! Oh my god! Because because they later on later on we can see that they can jump really high and also um, they punch a few people out. So yes. it makes sense that he can actual alien um, though. He's been possessed by the yeah. Yes, that's what I'm saying. He's a human. He's still a human. He's being possessed mm, by an alien. Yeah. You don't just think yourself. Uh, is it the placebo effect? That's what it's got. To Maybe. Be. <laughs> it's just. Maybe. It's just a big lot of placebo effect. Oh, by the way, speaking of the aliens jumping, I love that sound effect that played whenever the aliens <laughs> jumped. It was like doo 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 or something. It was excellent. <laughs> also, just to note the the guard or the attendant, I guess, in the. Uh, the mental institution was played by Jonathan Banks. Yeah, I recognized him. And I was like, hey, I've seen him in movies. That that was the reaction I had with a lot of the cast, which I was like, <laughs> wow, I've seen these people before. Yeah. Like, as you said, the, the other alien guy. I've, he's in so much stuff. And it's just like, oh, that guy. He's here again. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good on him. The, there were a bunch of other actors who were meant to be in this as well that were cut. Like, Jamie Lee Curtis was going to be Buckaroo's mum, and I think <laughs> they cut her scene. Wow. There was a bunch of other, like, famous actors who, like, filmed some stuff, and it was, yeah, just cut, so... Unfortunate. Somehow they got a great cast to be in this movie. That's probably where the 17 million went. <laughs> yeah. Ben, Buckaroo and the Hong Kong Cavaliers, they go to a club at this point. What what happens at the club? There, the, this is where in the introduction, uh, the phrase "hard rocking" comes into play. <laughs> ah, yes, I was waiting for this moment. <laughs> they were, they are, in fact, revealed to be not only a band of f friends and collaborators, but a band of musicians. Whoa! <laughs> yes, and they play. They're playing a gig. What is, what is all the cool things we can have these characters do? Everything? Put it in. We'll <laughs> yeah. do it. They're, they're musicians. They're scientists. They're medical experts. They're kung fu masters. They use guns constantly. Why? It's America. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great. It is good. Although uh, I have to disagree with what happens in this this. <laughs> Fuck out! It's the, the craziest thing. What? It, uh... <laughs> so, so Buckaroo stops the song that they're playing. He gets the mm. mic and says, Is "Somebody out there not having a good time? Is somebody crying in the darkness?" Is he? Is he got like subatomic hearing? Is that? <laughs> no, he's is just this? he's just an empath. <laughs> uh, of course. Why did I forget about his telepathy? He has to have some. He's not a telepath. He's an empath. Uh, same thing, really. Kinda. <laughs> so he stops the entire band, like the music and everything, because he thinks some person out there is not having a good time. Yep. Hmm. He then. Forces the crowd, like, moves them aside to find said person not having a good time. And uh, what do you think you would do if you found someone that was crying? What, what would you do to comfort them, uh, Sandro? I'd be like, are you okay? Hmm. Do you want to, I don't know, do you want to help? Okay, Ben, what, what, what do you think you would do? Well... If you, if you, if you, a stranger, 
they're crying. They're clearly not having a good time. What would what would you do? I don't know what I would do, but I know what I wouldn't do. Oh yeah, yeah, is... yeah. Tell me, tell me, please tell me what I wouldn't want to do. So what I wouldn't do is shine a spotlight <laughs> on that vulnerable person <laughs> and force them to to reveal their woes to a room full of strangers who are there to specifically experience a gig yeah. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a terrible thing to do to another yeah. human being how about this uh, another thing that you definitely shouldn't do is what? sing a song you wrote to your dead wife to that person <laughs> hey here's another thing to to get on top of that uh call them by your dead wife's <laughs> name instead of their real name <laughs> constantly <laughs> Although I would say the one thing, the one thing that I would probably do um, mm-hmm. is give out a, a, a weirdly comforting but still slightly perplexing and paradoxical quote. Do tell, do tell. What what kind of quote? If you were to come up with one right now on the spot, right here, what what yeah, quote yeah. would you say? I, I, it would be something like. Ah, like, I don't know the exact wording, but it would be something like, wherever you go, there you are. (laughs) (laughs) Which, by the way, was half the reviews for this film, wherever you are. Hey, it's a memorable quote. I, um, that was one of the few things that I remembered about the film. And I, 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 I'm going to just call it in advance for the end bit where we all say our favourite quotes. This was my favourite quote. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's a good it, quote. It, it, you can't argue with it, can you? No. So, this lady, her name is Penny, and she's the identical sister to Peggy, who was Buckaroo's wife who died. Although in the credits, she's listed as Anne. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I noticed that as well, and I went, what? Yep. <laughs> We only find out a bit later that she was the identical sister. Yeah. Yeah. What? Um, so did he not know that she had an identical sister? What? What was the? Why? There's there's one line where she mentions what? that she was adopted. So I think oh. that was split up. Yeah. I missed that. So for the entire film, I was just like, why doesn't he know about? Her? I don't. I don't know what what's happening. <laughs> That was that was just me with her with her story, her character, her backstory, mm. her introduction, just all of it. I I wasn't I was very confused. Uh, also, not to mention the fact that after Buckaroo Banzai started singing this incredibly sad and tender song, mm. she started singing along yes. somehow. Empath. At, well, yeah, <laughs> and then pulled out a gun. Uh, and she attempts to quotations kill bonsai because th- that's what they think they she does but uh oh, she she was clearly trying to commit suicide and then yeah. at the last moment the gun got knocked and she yeah. shot into the roof and then she gets arrested because everyone thinks that yeah she was there to kill bonsai her story arc felt like a parody like it's the identical twin sister of his dead wife who he then hooks up with like that is such a classic B movie trope but also like it's very self-aware it was a weird thing to add into the movie but I laughed a lot during a lot of her sequences just because of how weird yeah. they were yeah it was bizarre and the fact that she, it's, she has a gun and she, she attempted it I was like whoa this turned up to 11 real quick because she just pulls mm. it up from the bottom of the screen I'm like oh my god <laughs> Mm. Yeah, well, after you spotlight someone in the middle of this crowd and all that, and just call them out like that, jeez, Louise. Yeah. Of course, she gets arrested and all that, but he he bails her out. <laughs> obviously, uh... There's a quote as well where I think it's during he's bailing her out. Um, he says, "You know what? You remind me of someone I knew long ago." And her response to that is, "Was she beautiful?" <laughs> uh, uh, yep, mm. that's what I would first. Uh, say so uh yeah they meet up with goldbloom who officially joins the crew oh yeah that's right because he was like he, he was buckaroo's uh neuroscience colleague but he wasn't officially part of the hong kong cavaliers but he clearly really wanted to be um he was a big fan so mm. he mm. finally got his 
big moment to join up with the crew. Exactly. Uh, so what what would you do- don for such a big moment? I would don my traditional uh, cultural attire, which would definitely be a, a, a whole ass cowboy outfit. <laughs> Heck yeah. But don't forget your spurs, otherwise they'll make fun of you for that, for some reason. This is also the moment in the movie where Lozado calls someone called Big Booty on the phone. He says Big Booty, not Big Booty, because that's the joke. Mm. And I had my subtitles on for this, and I love how whenever someone says Big Booty, it's spelt with a Y, but whenever they say mm-hmm. Big Booty, it's spelt with an E. With a, with a little, like, hyphen as well. Yeah, right? yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. like indented E. So, uh, good on you, the person that wrote the subtitles. Yeah, good <laughs> on you. Good job. Put in the effort. We also see the giant alien ship that's orbiting Earth. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. Mm. I thought it looked very, um, I don't know, uh, alien. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. I liked a lot of the like the set design or the art design in this film. It was really, mm. uh, really imaginative and, and very lovingly put together. Yeah, I feel like the aliens were a little basic. They do give off heavy uh, Doctor Who alien vibes or Star Trek alien vibes. <laughs> Though to be fair, they are trying to disguise as humans, so they. They look a bit more humanoid. Maybe their true forms aren't as humanoid. I don't know. Buckaroo's given a press conference. Then he's got to talk to the president. But is it the president? Probably not. It's actually the alien ship. And they electrocute his brain and let him see the aliens for who they really are. Just in time for the aliens in the crowd to attack the press conference. And they kill the professor. Except not really. The professor's fine. They've kidnapped... Mm. Big Booty kidnaps the professor, right? If... Oh, yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, he kid he kidnaps him. That that whole thing. And also there was a there was a there was a bit during the press conference where they're trying to explain what happened. For some reason everybody every single character is on the lineup of the press conference. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a bit weird. Yeah. Including Penny who mm. he just met. Yeah, she's she's here. Yeah, she's a main character now. Just deal with it, all right? <laughs> so, Buckaroo, he, he he chases after the aliens who have kidnapped the professor. And there's a big old chase, massive chase. We cut between this chase and a an alien craft bird thing that swoops on some hunters, which was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it was very bizarre. And the alien craft kind of like lands and emerging from the craft is an alien who then falls over and dies. But then emerging from the craft again is another alien who is very important to the plot. Why was that? Why did they do that? Because it was funny. It was so weird. Because it's funny. It was. It was very funny. It was funny. very funny. <laughs> the, 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 just the first alien that comes out just slips over and dies. Yes. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I mean, that's pretty funny. It <laughs> is pretty funny. I'll give you that. So th- this is the Jamaican alien who is uh, one of the good guys and is there to mm. deliver a message to Buckaroo. He's very important. You know, you know they're the good guys because they have the latest edition of Buckaroo Banzai, <laughs> the comic book series. Oh, yeah. If they're fans of Buckaroo Banzai, they have to be good guys. Buckaroo, he shows up to the place where this, this ship has arrived. The bad guys in the van are also there. And he sneaks mm. into the van. He lets the professor loose, and then he uh, kicks an alien in the nuts and gets chased. And that was pretty fun. Well, let's uh, hang on, hang on. Let's not forget that what the way that this uh, pod is discovered was because there's two hunters, two men hunting, who come across the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and then the three aliens. Um, John Big Booty and the other two Johns come uh, and act as if they're official people mm. of some sort, and then the police are there, and uh, but they're you know very much in charge. And then it's only when one of them sees Bakuru Banzai that all hell breaks loose. Yes, mm. and the aliens punch a bunch of people. They do. They punch. It. Yeah, which is interesting choice for aliens. They just. They just punch people, or they jump on them. Yeah. They're very, like, <laughs> zombie-esque movie villains for some reason. They are. They are a bit. They, they they don't really, like, pull out laser guns, which would be my my go-to alien weapon. Mm. Yeah. They just 
jump at people and try and punch it. I guess because they try to be stealthy, so they're not having any armed alien weaponry on them just in case they're discovered or something, but it, I just mm. thought it was interesting. Oh, uh, I love the way that Buckaroo escapes from the aliens, though, because he's running, he's running, he's about to get run over by a, a truck or a car or something that one of the aliens is driving right at him, and um, and mm. he's, he's running away down this road, he's almost at a dead end, and then from the sky... Drops a ladder, Aha. which he climbs up to a helicopter that's piloted by the air kid. Oh yeah, because this is this is where this is where the um, the thing we were talking about earlier comes in when it's the the the, the fan club because mm. one of the one of the Hong Kong Cavaliers puts out a a bulletin to to anyone listening that Buckaroo is in trouble, and apparently every member of the Buckaroo Banzai fan club. Uh, is tuned into this channel and one kid who i think every fan is like a member of the like what, what, what was it called the club it was like the hmm. blue light silver blue light cap bucket buccaneers yep. or something like that yep yep, <laughs> yep. i think that's perfectly accurate <laughs> absolutely the silver blue light buccaneers um yep. and yeah one of one of the kids who happens to have been tuned in was like yeah i'll save buckaroo and so he goes out with his dad uh and they fly a helicopter and save buckaroo bonzo and then they're just there for the rest of the movie yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) which is great this kid is a a badass yeah he he he, he pulls out a gun one point yeah starts just starts threatening is it the the general of Um, this is later on the defense force guy yeah yeah the defense force guy he just threatens him with a gun so yeah they go back to the base where they all are which is where the good alien guy whose name is john parker he drops off Hmm. a message which is pretty much all the the exposition that we explained before about how space hitler was put in the eighth dimension and then is now possessing john lithgow and that's all how that all works which uh, which was actually a, a really cool hologram yeah yeah where and everyone was wearing these masks that, so that they could see the hologram and the masks <laughs> the with these mask weird sort of bubble so... wrap <laughs> it was just like bubble wrap with cut out yeah. bits on it it was, uh, it was that was fun it was it was very fun but i was like what is going on <laughs> why why is why do they have this group of people wearing bubble wrap on their heads oh and i really liked that i liked the the touch that like the light in the room had to be turned off for them to see what was in the hologram. Mm, that was cool. I yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of work that went into the scene, which was cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's just a lot of work that goes into the movie as well. Like there's so much detail mm. in everything. Mm. Yeah. At times it felt like there was too much detail. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, like there was some some moments in the film where you're thinking, does this relate to anything we've seen <laughs> yeah they just put so much detail in the littlest things it's bizarre yeah because we also get the info dump here about how all of the aliens run this company called yo-yo Dine, oh, that's right and they all have the first name john, john. with the weird last names <laughs> And they all yeah. applied for social security numbers on the same day which just happens to be the day of the war of the world's <laughs> radio mm, play mm, yeah and um to cover up the fact that that's when they came through the dimension they brainwashed orson wells to be like it was all a, <laughs> it, it, it was all a radio play that i wrote yeah that's right Absolutely. makes sense to me that was a funny addition yeah 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 i love the war of the world so i thought that was cool it was pretty it funny. was actually aliens the entire time what a twist <laughs> And they hypnotized Orson Welles <laughs> to, to, to claim it was a hoax. I also like the 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 little gag that like uh, someone was like, "Oh, it was made by Orson Welles." What the guy from the old wine commercial? <laughs> the guy from the old wine commercials. Because <laughs> yes. that was what by that point all that he had had uh, come down to was the guy from the old wine commercials. After his an illustrious film career. <laughs> Uh, the aliens also say that if they don't stop Lizardo and his plans to get their overthruster, they will start a nuclear war on, on Earth. 
Oh, uh, yeah, because they, they were like, if the humans... It was less that they'll start a nuclear war, and it's more just like, because that's the only way that they'll be able to obliterate the bad aliens, right? Hmm. Yeah, I think so, by yeah, d- destroying the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit drastic, I feel, but uh, probably necessary. This is where we cut to the president's office, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Yes. Who's in hospital? No, he's not in hospital. He's just in a big... He, yeah, he's in this... Ch- Why is he... Did we get an explanation? As he's to... back. It said... Yeah, because there, there was a bit where Bu- uh, Bucko Rubanzo was like, oh, I hope your back is feeling better, Mr. President. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. he did say that. Yeah. And so th- this machine was like some kind of back... <laughs> back support. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why not? Why did they do that? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> either, either this was a common piece of... Uh, uh, of uh, occupational therapy or mm-hmm. w- or it was a detail invented by the people making the film either way it's funny it is funny a medically sanctioned form of back therapy also just just as a, a point an, a, another casting note the one of the like advisors in the president's office um mm. when he's like advisor smirnoff <laughs> ah yes advisor smirnoff um was not only not only was he Russian, but his his name it was played by uh, the comedian Yakov Smirnov. Oh, it was him. Who, <laughs> okay. Yes, that's amazing. Uh, who people may recognize most famously from uh, coming up with the in Soviet Russia X does you jokes. Mm. Oh, really? That's him. Or, yeah, it it was a just a series of gags that he had about like you know in 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 America you watch television in Soviet Russia television watches you or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like in in uh, That's in, in America you go to party in Soviet Russia party come to you mm. they're quite quite clever the original ones actually the aliens invade Buckaroo's mansion and there's a big fight. Uh, they paralyze one of the Cavaliers. Oh, yeah. Who then dies. Oh, because they've got those alien things that they attach to people, and then if you take it off, they kill you. Yeah, they're like the, yeah. the horrifying bug things. Ugh. Yeah. They, they were gross. Very. Uh, the aliens that have invaded the mansion, they kidnap Penny. Oh, yeah. And then they take her to where Lazardo is, and they torture her with honey. You know what we were really missing? A damsel in distress. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen one of those lately. They didn't just torture her with honey. They smeared her with honey and then released uh, ants onto ants. her. Yeah, that sounds c- uncomfortable. It does a bit. I, got, I have to say, top ten. Oh, because I think they were like specifically like the the bitey kind of ants. Yeah, yeah, the fire ants. I think. Which is no fun. I can tell you, being bit by... I've been bit by a fire ant before. Ugh. It is not fun. You get a big old rash. It's a bad time. Aww. Yeah, and so I can only imagine someone coated in honey and then poured ants upon... That's that's not good. No. You know what? I'm no. going to rate that a, a, an oldie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Torch- being tortured? Ouch. And even if you're saved... You're still covered in honey. That doesn't take forever to wash off. I don't know. That bit sounds all right. You know, you can just scrape a bit off. Yummy snack. That's true. <laughs> With all the dirt that's been stuck on it. <laughs> Yum. And, uh, you know, just don't get dirty, you know, when you're being tortured by ants. Just, for sure, for sure. You can, you can wipe the dirt off. Five second roll, something like that. So, <laughs> the Cavaliers head off to save her and stop Lithgow at Lithgow's a uh, giant warehouse. That was the the Yo-Yo Dine yeah. headquarters. So what was with the Yo-Yo Dine? It's just the company. Yeah, is it just the name of it? Yeah. Because I mention it a lot. It's the company name. I was wondering if there was a, like a specific thing behind. The I think they're Dine. making the weapons for, the, for America. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. They're like weapon suppliers. We cut back to the president and apparently the Russians have gone to Code Red or something because... Mm. The threat of nuclear war is imminent, and one of the men in the president's office, and this is the main large quote that I wrote down, because I just Mm. love it so much. He's like, Mr. President, I am a soldier, and I am a damn good one. (laughs) I've got enough decorations to snap a Christmas tree. All I'm trying to say is, and I hope I speak for everyone in this room, is that I am scared. I'm barely holding my fudge right now. (laughs) And then we cut to th- the president, and the president's response is, Yes, finally, a man who's willing to speak the truth! <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> it's great. 
And then someone else in the room is like, pull yourself together, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah the, this lady is like, hey, general, you're a piece of garbage. Pull yourself together. Hey, what are you, a child? And then the president is about to sign the declaration of war, the short form. Oh, yeah, that was a funny <laughs> The <joke>. short <laughs> version. The short version. That was great. But yeah, then we get back to Buckaroo sneaking into the warehouse. Alien compound. Lozado's given his speech. I could not understand a word of that speech. There, There is a quote. I didn't write it down, but it's like, um, where are we going? Planet 10. When? Real soon. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's <laughs> yep. right. I did remember that bit. That was good. That was good. So Buckaroo gets captured. Yes. And strapped to a different torch. They have three different torture devices that they show in this movie. They have honey and ants. They have this one, electricity. Oh, yeah. They have electricity to zap a boy. Yep. And then you've got the the very, very slow slug on an angle <laughs> where they zap a oh, yeah. evil slimy slug thing. And it will very slowly go down a ramp to to eat you. <laughs> That's <laughs> <your> mark. <laughs> I don't know. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what that torture device was. <laughs> Do they walk into That's it because Penny's strapped into it, and like one of them is like, "Don't touch the slug," but Buckaroo just picks the slug and throws it away. So I I don't know <laughs> how right. effective this torture device is. <laughs> I think the idea is the slug's gonna try and slowly eat you, maybe with dissolving acids. But if you just pick it up and eat it, <laughs> fine. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> anyway, Lozado is torturing the formula for the over... No, what's it called? Overthruster. The overthruster. Mm. He's trying to get the details about it out of Buckaroo. Buckaroo's like, eh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And then how does he escape? Like, one of them just overload... Like, one of the Cavaliers overloads the power? Yeah, so an alien spots them... And tries to put the alarm on. I guess he succeeds. But then the Cavalier shoots him up and it causes an electrical surge. Mm. Which causes a mass power out, which just happens to free Buckaroo. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And so they're all running free over the loudspeaker. There's this voiceover saying, The monkey boys are in the facility. Ah, yes. The monkey boys. This is, this is the stage in the movie where the aliens start calling the monkey boys. They didn't. They didn't call the monkey boys at the start, you know, or anything. This is the point where they start calling the monkey boys. Yep. Which is, I found very strange. I feel like they surely would have mentioned monkey boy or something earlier. Did they not? I. Sh- I don't I, think they. I don't think they did. I thought that they did. Did any of you see the visual gag, if you will, uh, where I think I think it's Lazardo is going into a room and painted on the door is nobody comes in here, but it's spelled C U M Z. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, that's right. And also when there was another point at which um, it's like go oh, take them to the pit, and pit is spelt with two T's. <laughs> Take him to the Brad. The Brad Pit. The Brad, the Brad Pit. Pit. Very good. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of... Yeah, the aliens can't spell, and it's 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 very funny. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I still enjoyed the fact that they were all called John, John, and all of their surnames were... Well, I mean, you know, some of them were, were normal names, like Parker, uh, but then there was, like, John Yaya and John Smallberries. John mm. Smallberries. <laughs> Yes. It's because there was a moment when they were look, looking up all of these people who had put in their social security n- numbers uh, at the same day. Yeah, there was this list on the computer that was all of these, you know, John Many Jars. <laughs> John, yes, there was John Many Jars. Yeah. That was great. I paused it to look it. <laughs> they save Penny, as we mentioned, and all of the aliens are now getting on board John Lithgow's ship to leave to the eighth dimension. Buckaroo Banzai and John Parker get in like a, a smaller pod and chase after them. Mm. As John Warfin, a well, it's not because it's not Lizardo, it's now John Warfin. Yes. Mm. Lord Warfin as well, yeah. Lord Warfin is trying to escape and he's got with him John O'Connor and John Big Boutet. Mm. And it's at this point which... Uh, John Lithgow <laughs> uh, <laughs> says, w- "Big booty, 
and pronounces it Big Booty one too many times, and John Big Boote loses it, and he's like, it's Big Boote, Big Boote, and um, uh, the evil guy kills him. Yeah. Yep. He's just like, I have had enough of you, chick chick bang. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Very sad. And I was like, no, Big Boote, you made it so far in the movie, only to die at the very end. I think Big Boote... Bute does actually swear in this scene as well, which is, like, one of the only moments where they don't, like, censor themselves by saying fudge or something. And then I like the bit where, after Big Bute gets shot, um, Vincent Schiavelli's John just sort of, like, sheepishly slides into this um, <laughs> suit that, that the other guy was wearing. Yeah, donning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Bucko Banzai's still chasing after him, and they work together. Uh, this was another funny moment where it's like, you know, take the controls, and it's like, I failed my driving course. I was, I'm just a diplomat. <laughs> mm, yes, it's just like, oh, oh, a random bit of uh, information on our new alien friend that just comes out. Of but also, I, I like that kind of like playing with the trope of, oh no, actually, not every alien that comes down is, you know, a, a full tilt killing machine. Actually. Yeah. This guy was just mm. a diplomat here to send a message. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which exactly. makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. They wouldn't send a pilot to, you know, talk with us. They would send a, a diplomat. Um, but they work, They managed to work together, and they shoot some kind of laser beam that explodes uh, John Warfen's ship. Yeah, mm. the action scene lasts for a total of maybe two minutes, which is very short, <laughs> but I loved that. I loved how short it was. Uh, yeah, and I mean... The action scene was so short, I think, just because it was inevitable. Like, yeah. as if he's not going to succeed. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, and then they parachute. Oh, yeah, because uh, John Parker stays in the ship and flies back to his mothership. Yep. While Buckaroo Banzai parachutes out and lands next to his friends. Yes, mm. and then the aliens fly off. They're like, we don't need to start a war anymore. They fly off. Everyone's happy. Yes. So the threat is gone. He makes out with Penny as the aliens on board the ship are still watching him, and one of them says, oh, so what? Big deal, as he's watching them make out. <laughs> that's right, and that's the end. And that's the end of the... Well, you say it's the end, well, but then on screen we see, whoo, watch out for the next Buckaroo Bunzai adventure. Buckaroo Banzai against the World Crime League. Yes. Uh, it never came out. Yes. Big sad. I'm so sad. I, I I do I do always feel bad when um they have like a very clear like sequel thing planned and then it's no, no it did no <laughs> no that never happened. Uh, yeah, oh well. We'll, we'll talk a bit sad. about the sequels in a second, but uh, that is the movie. That is Buckaroo Banzai. Adventures across dimension number eight. <laughs> That's definitely the title of the film. <laughs> a couple of moments I think we skipped over uh, were including that little kid who saved Buckaroo Banzai uh, with his dad. Mm. And then there was a moment afterwards where Buckaroo Banzai is like, hey kid, you know, you can, you can be a part of the team or something like that. And it's like, I'll just have to check with my dad first. <laughs> quite yeah. sweet. Yeah, there we go. That was, that's yeah. the movie. Uh, I, uh, I'm no, 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 no. That's not the movie because well. the end credits. Oh, the yeah, end the credits. Cr- best bit. Which features Buckaroo Banzai walking to the jointy theme music and then another one of his, uh, well, and then one of his compatriots joins him in this walk and then another one walk, joins him in this walk and then another one, and then another one, including all the dead ones, and they just they walk up along to the ba da ba 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 da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 da 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 da, and and it's all fun and jaunty, and as the end credits roll, that was a good final credit sequence. I think I've seen that before. I think maybe some people were inspired by this end credits and used it in their own movie. Well, I I read that the Life Aquatic did that. Oh, okay. Huh. As as a reference to the film, I think, which also uh, featured Jeff Goldblum. All right, Zach, what are you going to rate it? Uh, I'm going to rate it goody. I was 20 minutes in, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to give this one a goody. <laughs> I was enjoying myself the whole time. It was a very fun, definitely worth worthwhile checking out to uh, get a bit of fun 
random B movie action. Yeah. With a whole lot of cra- crazy stuff happening. Very entertaining. I- I'll definitely rate this a 69. <laughs> definitely a well deserved 69. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> one, two, three. Nice. Nice. <laughs> We'll get it one day. Yeah, what are you going to rate it, Ben? Yeah, definitely a goodie. It's a, it's a good time. I'm going to give it a goodie as well. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's really fun. I will say this, though. I don't know who I would recommend this to. I'd recommend it to anyone. Yeah. Anybody anybody who can spare the time for a, a, a silly, fun, B-list sort of action movie. Anybody can really get some enjoyment out of this, I feel. I think so. Part of me is like, I feel like you might have to be more aware of... Mm. B-movies from the 80s to get it, but then mm. maybe not. I, I don't know. Well, you could... You, here's, here's the secret thing, and this is my secret for enjoying these movies. If you're having a bad time, just get some alcohol. Aww. It solves that problem right <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. I, dis- I distance myself from that. That's fair. So three goodies for Buckaroo Bonsai. Check it out if the you want to The three goodies. Mm. Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor, and Bill Oddy. <laughs> mm. Is it... Is it... Better or worse, Ben, than uh-huh. Toxic Avenger. Ooh. The other film you've done Ooh. this year. I yes. probably... I'd give them a similar rating, to be honest. But which would you give the 69 and which would you give the 42? <laughs> That's the real question. I mean, I honestly, I'd probably give the Toxic Avenger 69. Mm. But I don't know. They, I, If I'm using, you know, regular human rating systems... Wow. Then I'd, I'd probably give them Sorry? both what? about a four, a four stars out of five. Ew. Get it, get it out of here. No, none of these stars. <laughs> what is this rating system? I hate it. <laughs> the, I don't know. They're both great. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, they're both so similar yet so distant. Uh, uh, different. Yeah. All right, before we pitch our own sequels, there was meant to be a sequel, but oh, it yeah. unfortunately never happened because this film bombed and then the company that made the film went bankrupt <laughs> and... and just a whole bunch of things meant that it could never happen. I think one of the major film companies still owns the rights to a sequel, though, and Kevin Smith of Jay and Silent Bob fame was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna remake it. I'm gonna do a re- re- remake or a soft reboot sequel of the movie. This was probably five, six years ago. Uh, he's since left the project, so that's not gonna happen. Honestly... Go- good yeah i i don't think it needs to be a soft reboot i i mean just just stay in the world you know just let the let the people do what they do i don't know yeah i don't think that needs to be a sequel yeah i mean i, I, I think i think the time for a sequel from this movie has passed mm. like if they had, if they had done one after it after it had you know not caused them to go bankrupt then yes i think that sequel could have been done although I don't know if, if it would be any good. Uh, in terms of other sequels, though, there was meant to be a TV show in the 90s that was also cancelled, and there's also comics, apparently, Ben. You were talking about that before. Yeah, so uh, around about the time of the film's release, there was, like, one single-issue Marvel special comic, um, and then I think in the late 2000s, a whole bunch of comics were released as well. Let's do our own sequels. Zach, start us off with a sequel. What have you got? All right. So my sequel is uh, I want to do Buckaroo Banzai, but the reverse. Oh. Now, uh, you might be asking what that might be. It It's from the aliens' perspective. Oh. And it's the aliens breaking through the dimensional barrier. <laughs> but uh, while that's happening, alien Hitler... <laughs> comes to power and he's like we can use this to take over other dimensions and stuff and he's like we gotta take over these dimensions rah 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 and we get these freedom fighters and it's a bit of a well uh, we'll just do star wars but all alien instead of some humans and aliens you know wow and it's on their planet and it's very blue uh did you have one ben well uh, i was thinking it would be I mean, you know, it would be, I suppose, the further adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. But then, you know, I'm thinking, how do you top, like, aliens from the eighth dimension? You know, even the supposed, the the, the, the proposed sequel the, against the World Crime League is like, well, okay, well, they're the World Crime League, but these are aliens from the eighth dimension. I mean, how do you, how do you top that? I don't know. I feel like it would be the World Crime League, but 
also there's more aliens. I don't know. I I I I'm, I honestly struggle to think of how you how you top aliens. But then I don't know. Maybe it's just about like se- settling down and uh, I don't know. I mean, actually, you know what? This is what it is. Buckery Banzai uh, goes <laughs> goes back in time and stops. Uh, well, I mean, he stopped alien Hitler. Now he can stop human Hitler. Ah! <laughs> um, oh, no. Or. Or goes into the future and attempts to curb the uh, the rise of the far right in the 21st century. Ooh. It's Buckaroo Banzai versus the neo Nazis. He, he he comes <laughs> he comes to 2020 to stop coronavirus. <laughs> Buckaroo Banzai against. against- coronavirus my idea is actually a tv show oh boy where every episode is set with a a new sort of alien from a new planet because we've got planet 10 right we already know what planet 10 is so the first episode is they are exploring planet 11 and episode 2 is planet 12 every planet's different one of them is a cowboy planet uh, and then Jeff Goldblum has it's his time to shine exactly one of them is a like like a water planet or something like there's like a jungle planet and all these weird ideas eventually the final episode is planet 69 <laughs> which is just a real nice place got oh, great nice. three two one nice nice, nice. Ah, <laughs> close that's the ideas zach take it away <laughs> all right it's time for Raving reviews. It's aliens. Uh, cool. <laughs> yep. Well, I've got to keep score. It's raving reviews. It's the time of the, sh- the part of the show where I do some reviews. I get them from Rotten Tomatoes, the only place where you can get legitimate reviews, and of course, not by the human uh, human robots that we call the critics, because as we know, they're um, they're all shills. So uh, we have to get it from the audience score. So I've gathered the best group of audience scores, ones that will give you an in-depth look into this movie, well, you guys have to guess the score that the review has given them. Ben, you you know the rules, so you've... Uh, yes. I, I believe last time you managed to beat Sandro? Yeah, everyone has. <laughs> That's the running joke. Alex says, bad, 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 comma, amazing. Oh. That's pretty mm. deep when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad, wow. bad. Amazing. Comma. Amazing. I'm going to say three out of five. For me, this is one of those ones where it's like, is this person one of those people who rates like a really bad film or a film that they find really bad, like a five out of five? Or is this a person who's like, oh, this was so bad. It's amazing. One out of five. Mm. Um, That's the trick. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go five out of five. Wow. And you would be right. They're five out of five. It's five out of five. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So that's a point for Ben already. Damn. Starting off with a strong footing. Ding, 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 ding. Frank. Frank says, okay, so when it came out in 1984, I thought it was cool. Quite a few future stars that probably don't want to claim it today. Wow. I think if you asked Jeff Goldblum if he remembers this movie, he'd be like, I love it. It's a great film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would, yeah, I would disagree. I think they, they remember this film. I'm going to stick with my three. Another three? Yes. You know that scores change, right? Yeah, but <laughs> I'll change it for the, the next one, no matter what. Right, yeah, okay, okay. I reckon it's a two. You reckon it's a two? Well, you're both wrong. It's a 0. 0.5. Oh, wow. Out Whoa. of five. <laughs> It was Whoa. it was terrible. Didn't you clear? He clearly stated that they don't want to claim it because it's bad. Uh, yeah, but I, I thought maybe the you know the the statement of when he first saw it in 1984 when it came out, they thought it was really cool. I thought maybe some of those would translate to points. Yeah, unfortunately, not. Harriet says, "Wish the movie was as good as the closing credits." Damn. Which I think uh, I think we uh, can somewhat relate to. The closing credits were very good. This is a two from me. I'm going to say it's a three. Yeah, well, it's actually a 2.5. Oh, so you're both oh. equally wrong on this one. Oh. Holly says, ha, 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 ha. This movie was, um... <laughs> oh, okay. So what does this review say about this movie to you, Ben? I think it's like either like a... Mm. Again, a really high one or a really low one. Mm. 
I, I think 1.5. I think you 1.5, okay. Ooh, I think I'm going too low, but I might do 3.5. 3.5? You think that's too low? Ooh. Yeah. You think she she's rating us highly? Well, I can tell you it's a 2.5 once again. Wow. <laughs> oh, right smack okay. bang in the middle. It's just an update on the scores. Ben's got one. I, I, fantastic. <laughs> so. And Sandra's got zero. Yep. <laughs> uh, Guy says F10s make perfect rocket cars, and Jeff Goldblum dressed up as a cowboy. <laughs> Completely disregarding all of the aliens, but okay. Uh, let's go two. All right, Sandra's going two. Ben, what do you think? Uh, I think it's a 3.5. It's a five out of five, very clearly. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum dressed up as a cowboy. How can you not love that? Ah, oh, guys, you're really not on ball today. No. A private says, ah, ha, 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 Yeah. <laughs> that is a good one. Uh, five out of five. I don't know. <laughs> five out of five. <laughs> I'm going to say four out of five. It's four out of five. Oh. Ben did it. Yay! Yay! Well done. Good work, Ben. Uh, Once again, keeping your winning streak alive. That was ridiculously hard. <laughs> <laughs> These are terrible. <laughs> uh, I really found some winners today, I think. Well, that is the episode. Thank you so much for listening. As per usual, if you like the show and want to help us out, just tell a friend. That's a good way to do it. Uh, we're on literally every single podcast platform that you can possibly think of. If you're thinking of one mm. now, we're on it. Uh, Spotify. Yeah, we're on it. Uh, SoundCloud. No. That's not a podcast platform. Oh, right. Uh, 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 iTunes. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook. Uh, technically, we do have a Facebook <laughs> account, yes. Yeah? Am I wrong? Am I wrong, Sandra? That's what I thought. No, we are on Facebook. We're, yeah. we're on Facebook, so you can't say I'm wrong. Uh, we've got links to everything in the description. If you want to get in contact with us, please do. Check out Zach on Nerd Out Consumed, the spin-off show of Ooh. Nerd Out, which is the show that I do with Rob Lloyd and Jen Spears, who have been on the show before. Reese is the co-host of that. He was on the Star Trek episode. Zach's talking Star Trek 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, I've heard of this Star Trek thing. I hear it's a, it's real, real fun. Yeah. I've, uh, I've wanted to trek with stars for a while now, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm, uh, I'm excited to do that as well. <laughs> ben, do you have anything to plug? Well, uh, I'm starting up a podcast with some friends called Video Vortex, which is going to be a surprise, surprise, a film discussion podcast. Whoa. What? Oh, that sounds uh, awful. I hate those podcasts. (laughs) (laughs) But more, more sort of talking about themes and concepts around culture and society and the way that they relate to cinema Mm. rather than specifically focusing on a uh, particular film. I like you. So keep an eye out for that in the near future. Awesome. Or in a year. <laughs> and links to your socials are in the episode description as well if you want to check out Ben that way. Yes. So, Sandro. Yes. You have to pick next week's movie, I believe. Oh no, so much pressure on my shoulders I can barely stand. We got a few select choices. Some of them are better than others. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Oxford Blues. A hustler has to con his way into university for a girl. Oh. Choose me. <laughs> Three lives connect at a drive bar in LA. No spoilers, but it got above 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Cool. So that sounds like a pass. Aww. Uh, and uh, Bolero. In the 20s, a woman travels around the world to lose her virginity. This again? No spoilers, but it could be considered the worst film of 84. We just had a film with that. <laughs> yes, except it was a it was a girl that thought she was going to die. Yeah, and this is set in the 20s. So she has to lose her virginity. And then we have chud what a sci-fi horror chud stands for cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say about that wow and finally flashpoint uh texas border patrolman finds a jeep a skeleton and eight hundred thousand dollars in cash that's a lot of movies yep it is it's quite a few i'm only really interested in choose me and chud <laughs> Um, the name. Choose I know which one I really want. <laughs> the name "Choose Me" makes me what? feel obligated to choose it, and therefore no, no, I think I'm gonna go for the other option because I'm a real rebel <laughs> and I'm gonna pick Chud. Yeah, give me some Chud. 
<laughs> on some cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. It's actually a fantastic film. Ooh. And if you go in thinking that it's going to be some schlocky 80s monster movie, uh, you are going to be in for a treat because it's not. Ooh. What? All right. You, you've seen it? Yeah, I have. Wow. Oh. Um, it's really, really good. Okay. Excellent. Wow. There's yeah. a there's a there's a spoiler for next week. Ben says it's really good. <laughs> and that means that I'm going to predict that we're both going to rate it an oldie. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm also going to predict <laughs> Ouch. I I'm, I'm going to predict that I at least am going to rate it a goodie because most things Ben said have been pretty fun to watch. That's true. I don't know about good, but they've been very fun to Thanks, watch. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks. I li- I'm, I'm not going to lie. Most of most of the movies you say are pretty good. Yeah. They're, they're all right. I mean, they're not the best, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, they're all right. They're semi-decent. Um... Uh, no, Chad does sound like something that would be right up our alley, so I think we will both give it a goodie, I think. Both, both give it a goodie, yeah. I think absolutely. it'll be a fun one. Um, all right, let's wrap it up with the best quote from... Bucker, mm. uh, what's the full title? The Adventures of Bucker Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. My favorite quote is, Mr. President, I'm a soldier, and I'm a damn good one at that. I've got enough decorations to snap a Christmas tree. All I'm trying to say is, and I hope I speak for everyone in this room, is that I'm scared. I'm barely holding on to my fudge right now. Mm. Oh, and then the, <laughs> the president says, yeah, finally someone's willing to speak the truth. You know, that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's that quote. Nice. Uh, uh, yep. Mine was the one that I mentioned earlier, which is mm. no matter where you go, there you are. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> uh, Bakuru Banzai, born in a, to an American mother and a Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I will do. Uh, where are we going? Planet 10. When? Real soon. <laughs> <laughs> Fun facts time! In one scene, Reno refers to Austin Wells as the guy from the old wine commercials. This is a reference to Wells' popular television commercials in the 70s for the Paul Mason Winery, and now known as Mountain Winery, where he used the slogan, We will sell no wine before it's time. <laughs> in the early 1980s, Wells was fired from the advertising campaign after stating on a US talk show that he never actually drunk the company's wine. Wow. <laughs> Fun facts. There's outtakes from this. Yeah, don't don't admit that on television. <laughs> There's outtakes from quite a few, because by this point in his career, Wells was uh, quite bankrupt and did pretty much anything to raise money for film projects that would never get made. Mm. Uh, and so he did quite a few commercials, and there's outtakes from several of them. Um, and there was some that he did for, like, tinned peas, like, it's all very sad because this is what this man has been reduced to, but it's quite funny at the same time. So, <laughs> look them up. Fun facts! 